Once again, it is Sunday, and that means it is time for the hook of the week here at Black Bear Forge. Welcome back. This week, I've pulled a piece of 3-8 square bar out of the bucket of scrap material, so that's about 10 millimeter square bar, and I thought I would make a longhorn hook. And that means the Texas longhorn if you get the horns right, people are going to see the longhorn. They're going to know what it is you're trying to make. So that's the key element in this hook. And that's where we're going to start. And to start this, I'm just going to draw a taper on the end of the bar here. I probably want about an inch and a half total taper when I'm done. And I want it a little bit rectangular so I can split it into two square pieces when I'm all done. Hope that makes sense. So something like that. We're going to do a little bit more drawing out after we create the two horns. But it's easier to draw them both out as one unit at this point. Split those with a chisel and I'm going to go ahead and mark them before I take my next heat. Just a little bit easier. I'm going to use the finest chisel I've got. This is an H13 chisel and it's very delicate but it'll be better for this smaller material. Go very careful until you're sure you've found center. In fact, we're not trying to cut now anyways. I'm just creating a mark I can find hot. And I'm pulling the chisel every time to see where I'm marking. When we actually start splitting, it's better to try to walk the chisel in the cut. It's more efficient. Okay. I got a bad strike there. Hopefully that'll forge in and won't look bad. Cools off quick, so reheat it. The delicate chisel doesn't want to work as a cold chisel any more than it has to. Into this, it's starting to split. One more heat, we should have it. Let's go to the vise and open that up some. I'm going to stand that up in the vise and drive the chisel straight down to finish the split. And it also gives me a way to open this up. Now, because I use such a fine chisel, there's very little rag around here, but there's still a little bit. Quickly file that down so it's not sharp and ragged. This is just an old worn out file I keep by the vise. I use it on hot material and you can rub it back and forth both directions. The file's not going to care at this point. And the 
some hot material. Cuts really easy. So let's go to the anvil, draw these horns out, round them up, and then we'll work on uh, making the actual head. First, I'm just going to get them straightened out a little bit there. Once you get them square, then take them down to an octagon, and you can round them up. If you need to, come back with a file and clean the round up. Cow horn should be smooth. This could be any number of things at this point. Could make that into a fork, you could make it into a snail, could make it into a ram's head, perhaps a dragon. But we're going to stick with the longhorn idea. And to do that, the next thing I want to do is I want to fold this over. It's really exactly the same way I would do a ram's head. I'm just going to take about three-eighths of an inch off the edge. If you're using half-inch material, I'd leave about a half an inch. See, now it even looks more like a snail. But we're going to double that back on itself. And that will become our face. So now we just need to think about what a Longhorn steer face might look like. I'm going to kind of slope his forehead and create something with some half face blows here that might be eye sockets. I don't have a picture of a longhorn in my head real clearly here, so I'm just kind of making this up as we go. Like I say, the horns are what will tell people that that's what you were trying to make here. I'm going to go put this angle block in the vise. This helps support the piece you're working on at an angle that's easier to see and get to the features. Not absolutely necessary, but it's handy. I'm going to put that in the angle block and I'm going to start with an eye punch here. This is just a round eye punch. I'm going to lose so much heat, I'm not going to get much done here. But we can start to establish the eyes. See if I can hit my camera. Or better yet, let's see if I can not hit the camera. get that hot again. This is going to bend back and forth a little bit. So go back and forth with your punch so that you're straightening it. I'm going to need to quench that off I think next time. Well, there's no forge weld or anything in here, it just doesn't really need it. This is a steer with big bulgy eyes. Let 
this point I'm going to give him a couple of nostrils. Kind of accentuate them a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of a mark in for a mouth. And you could kind of highlight around the nose because the nose is usually pretty distinct on a, an animal. But I'm not sure if it's worth the trouble to do that in something like this. But you could take a chisel, maybe even a curved chisel to come around, depending on what you want to do. And you could put pupils in the eyes if you want. It's easy to make them look cross-eyed when you do that because it's hard to see exactly where you're putting the center punch mark. In fact, I don't even see that one at all. Huh. So again, I'm not sure this is something you really need to worry about. So that's most of his head done. We need to flatten the horns out and we need to bend it some because this is going to have to look out into the room when you see the hook. I'm just going to put him in the vise. Leave enough sticking out to get a nice curve of the neck here. Make him look out into the room while he's hanging on the wall. I'll finish these horns up a little later. I just want them a little bit straighter. Of course, who knows? That's not bad right there. I think they need to kick up, though. So here's what we've got so far. That's the face part done. I think the next thing, I'm going to put some dimples in here that will later get drilled for screws. Then we'll draw out a hook. I kind of wish I'd measured this. I thought I was going to cut that off, but it looks like I'm going to end up using all of that. But I don't really know how much I started with. Sorry about that. Just want to decide where the screw holes are going to go. This just creates a nice place to put a screw. And it widens it out so you don't lose strength by thinning the material too much. And then with a round head screw in there that's a very decorative, kind of looks like a rivet set in there when you're all done. Now let's make a hook out of this. And again, I think I'll just draw this out on the face of the anvil. I'm going to keep that head pointing down so both, one, I don't actually hit it, but two, I don't actually stick myself. I would hate to be gored. You could draw this out into a square or a round taper and put a little curly cue on the end. Just whatever your hook wants to look like. I decided this is what my hook wants to look like. Try to keep it straight though. I'm knocking the sharp corners off. I suppose we better touch mark it before somebody complains. Now depending on how tall your touch mark stamp is, make sure you don't accidentally hit him in the nose while you're doing this. Well, that one just barely fits. I actually think it would look better just ignoring the touch mark in a lot of cases because I don't think that makes the hook look any better. Bend 
going backwards on this. I don't think it needs to be a full scroll all the way around though. Looks like his horns are in my way here. Yeah, we can fix that. There we go. This is going to be kind of a short little hook. Use more material. Whatever I use, use just a little bit more, I think. But that's going to be okay. Now let's deal with those horns. do here is just try to get the curves to all match. Kind of think about what a longhorn looks like. Be worth going checking out the internet at this point. But I'm just going to go on faith that maybe I have a clue. I think that's pretty good. People will certainly know what it's supposed to be. That is the big thing. Oftentimes figures in iron are really more caricatures than they are exact representations. Unless you're Daryl Nelson, and if you've never seen any of Daryl Nelson's animal heads, I strongly encourage you to go do a web search, see what you can find. At the very least, the Rocky Mountain Smiths has had Daryl Nelson demonstrate at our conference a few times. And if you go to the Rocky Mountain Smiths website, and I'll put a link down in the description, you can find DVDs of Daryl Nelson. I think most of those he's making a bear's head because that's what he's really famous for. But if you can find more of his work online, he does the most lifelike, most realistic ram's heads and steers and other things. He's incredibly talented at making animal heads. And some of them are big. Some of these things are four inches square starting material. It's really impressive work and well worth taking a look at. But for this, I'm gonna let this cool a little bit before it's completely cool. I'll put some wax on it, then I'll drill some holes in it for some screws and we'll take a look at the finished product. So stick around to the very end of the video if you want to see the close-ups. Well, there we have a nice little longhorn steer hook. This is probably not the best hook for hanging your clothes on because these horns might snag something. We used to use one pretty much like this in our kitchen, and we used to hang the little loops of the pot holders on the horns, and it was really pretty practical there. But I'm sure you can find something to hang on it, or it just looks good hanging on the wall, even if you're not using it for something practical. They say he might be just a little bit short. Maybe the little bigger hook down here might have looked good, but there's nothing wrong with this one. That's just all personal preference. And as always, I will try to get better close-ups of this so you can see his facial features at the very end of the video. But speaking of the end of the video, we're about there. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you'd like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. There's certainly no obligation. Those are merely donations. The content is free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and do wash your hands, and we will see you for the next one.